Spider-Man No Way Home will hit theaters soon and it's the perfect time to take a look at the villains in the movie. Dr. Octopus, Electro, Green Goblin, Sandman and Lizard. I researched all of their origin stories so you don't have to. If you don't want to watch the entire video, you can find timestamps down in the video description. Let's start with the first villain, Dr. Octopus. Like almost every character in this video, Doc Ock is created by Stan Lee and Steve Ditko. He first appeared in the third issue of the Amazing Spider-Man comics way back in 1963. His real name, which made fun of by some Gen Z teens in the trailer, is Otto Octavius. Otto comes from a dysfunctional family. He has an abusive father and his mother is an overprotective woman. His mom keeps telling him, don't be like your father, solve your problems with your brain, not your fists, and he takes this advice very seriously and becomes the inventor of the infamous mechanical arms which he can control with his brain. Otto also falls in love with one of his co-workers, Mary Alice Sanders, and he proposes to her, but his mother doesn't approve this marriage, claiming she is not good enough for her son. During one of their arguments, his mother dies because of a heart attack, and he also breaks up with the woman he loves. But these unfortunate events are not what makes Otto choose the dark side. He becomes a villain because of an explosion caused by a radiation leak. The accident damages his brain and the mechanical arms becomes attached to his body. Then he takes his villain Elias, Dr. Octopus, a nickname used by his co-workers to make fun of him behind his back. Doc Ock is not only the founder of Sinister Six, a group of villains consisting the deadliest enemies of Spider-Man, he also became Spider-Man by switching bodies with Peter Parker. If you want to check out this story, which I recommend you do, all this happens in the Superior Spider-Man comics. Moving on to the movieverse. In Spider-Man 2 from Sam Raimi's trilogy, which was released in 2004, Doc Ock was portrayed by Alfred Molina and he will reprise his role in Spider-Man No Way Home. Alright, let's move on to our second villain, Electro. There are two different versions of Electro in the Marvel Universe. The original Electro is the one created by Stan Lee and Steve Ditko. And the other one is Francin Fry, who first appeared in 2014 and became the second Electro in 2016. Let's have a look at the first one. Electro, aka Maxwell Dillon, first appears in the ninth issue of The Amazing Spider-Man, released in 1964. Max is just an ordinary electrical engineer, but one day, while he was repairing a power line, a freak lightning accident turns him into a human living electrical capacitor. His powers were very weak at the beginning and this leads him into stealing equipment from Stark Industries so he can charge himself. After a while, he became so powerful, even Magneto Senpai noticed him. His first encounter with Spider-Man happens during his attempt at robbing J. Jonah Jameson and he actually almost kills Spider-Man. But Spidey is smart. He uses a fire hose against him, making Electro short circuit and wears rubber gloves to beat him up. In the comics, Electro also appears in Daredevil and Fantastic Four as a villain many times. Even though he's such a strong villain, he usually gets defeated or outsmarted by the heroes because of his weakness to water. As he gets older, Max starts losing his powers and this brings us to the second Electro, Miss Fry. Francine Fry is a lady obsessed with villains, just like me. She becomes friends with Electro and one day she tries kissing him and dies because of the electricity in Max's body. Later in the comics, she is brought back to life, but apparently that kiss caused their DNA to mix with each other through their saliva and that's how she got her powers. After coming back to life, she kisses Max this time, kills him and becomes the new Electro. In the movieverse, Electro first appeared in The Amazing Spider-Man 2, portrayed by the famous actor Jamie Foxx, and he will reprise his role in No Way Home. And by the way, kudos for changing his costume and character design. This time he looks way better. Let's move on to our third villain, Green Goblin. The 
There are four different characters in Marvel Universe known as the Green Goblin. I will focus on the Osborns because, well, they are the goblins who appeared in Marvel movies. Let's start with Norman Osborn. Norman is a smart and a bright kid who grew up with a toxic father. He builds Oscorp Industries during his college years with one of his professors, Mandel Strom, and becomes one of the richest people alive. Wanting the full control of Oscorp Industries, he accuses Strom of embezzlement and have him arrested. Then, while going through Mandel's possessions, he discovers a strength and intelligence enhancement formula, but in attempting to create a serum, things go wrong, the serum turns green and explodes to his face. It makes Norman stronger and smarter, yes, but it also drives him insane. From this point on, he becomes an arch nemesis of Spidey, and in one of the most popular storylines from the comics, he is responsible for Gwen Stacy's death. Remember, an alternate version of this story was also in The Amazing Spider-Man 2, probably the only good thing that movie did. In Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy, Willem Dafoe portrayed Green Goblin, aka Norman Osborn, and he will reprise his role in No Way Home. In the Amazing Spider-Man movies, Norman Osborn was more like a side character and he was portrayed by Chris Cooper. Up next, son of Norman, Harry Osborn. Harry is the first and only child of Norman, but his mother dies while giving birth to him. Probably one of the many reasons why Norman doesn't like him very much. Apparently every Spider-Man villain has daddy issues. What separates Harry from the others though? He is a very close and a dear friend to Peter Parker, unaware that he is actually Spider-Man. Unfortunately, Harry has a self-destructive lifestyle that causes him to lose everything, including his girlfriend Mary Jane. On top of that, he is diagnosed with schizophrenia. What makes him Green Goblin is witnessing a fight between Spider-Man and his father. In this fight, Norman accidentally gets killed by his own glider and Harry blames Spider-Man for the incident. Eventually, he learns Spidey's real identity and challenges Peter, but Peter refuses to fight because he doesn't want to hurt his friend. But he successfully captures Harry and puts him into police custody. There, he is put in the care of a criminal psychologist, Dr. Bart Hamilton, and yes, this is the Bart Hamilton who will become the third Green Goblin. In Sam Raimi's trilogy, Harry Osborn was portrayed by James Franco, and in the Amazing Spider-Man movies, he was portrayed by Dane Dehan. These two probably won't be in No Way Home or any other possible sequels, I don't think. So, only two more villains to go, Sandman and Lizard. Let's get to know Sandman. Sandman first appears in 1963 as William Baker. He changes his name to Flint Marco because he doesn't want his mother to know that he's a criminal. His illegal activities eventually puts him behind bars and while he was trying to escape, he ends up on a beach near a nuclear testing site. Coming into contact with sand that's been irradiated changes Marco's molecular structure into sand, meaning he can transform his whole body into sand. He's so impressed with his new powers, he calls himself Sandman. His first encounter with Spidey happens in Peter Parker's high school, but Spider-Man manages to defeat him with a vacuum cleaner and hands him to the police. Sandman also becomes a part of the Sinister Six, but being defeated by Spider-Man countless times diverts his attention to other superheroes in Marvel Universe, like Human Torch, Fantastic Four and many many others. In the first Spider-Man trilogy, Sandman was portrayed by Thomas Hayden Church and he will reprise his role in No Way Home. You may remember his storyline was pretty different in the movie. He was a loving father, but he was in serious debt, he was also the reason Uncle Ben was killed. A very unnecessary change it was, if you ask my opinion. Last but not least, Sandman lately appeared in the Ultimate Marvel comic books and he's kind of a man-made mutant now. Moving on to our last villain, and he actually triggers one of my biggest phobias, the Lizard. The Lizard, aka Curtis Kurt Connors, is a gifted surgeon. He lost his arm during an explosion in a battlefield while he was working for the US Army. 
After going back to civilian life, he begins working on reptilians and their abilities to regenerate their limbs. Curtis eventually develops an experimental serum taken from reptilian DNA and the test results shows that it's working. But when he attempts to use the serum on himself, sure, things go wrong and as a side effect, he subsequently transforms into a lizard. When he is the lizard, he has superhuman strength, intelligence and he can mentally communicate and command all reptiles within a mile of himself via limited telepathy. That's like one of my worst nightmares. In some instances, Kurt is able to transform into the lizard under stressful conditions or when he is really angry, just like Hulk. In some variations of the character, he's actually an ally and a respected mentor to Peter Parker like in the first Spider-Man trilogy. In those movies, Dr. Kurt Connors was portrayed by actor Dylan Baker, but he never transformed into the Lizard. The Lizard, who is making a comeback, was portrayed by Riz Ifans, I think, in The Amazing Spider-Man, and he will reprise his role in No Way Home. And that's it. These are the five villains confirmed in Spider-Man No Way Home. Are there any more? We don't know yet. Vulture? Or maybe Venom? I guess we'll have to wait and see. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.